All right, let's try that again. <clears throat> Hello there. My name is Michael Trowbridge, and the project I was tasked with was to design and implement a new mechanic into this tile-based game here. Uh, the mechanic I designed is called Minesweeper, a tile that can determine how many hazards, or in this case, mines, are near it, and then tell the player. Uh, much like the original Minesweeper desktop game. Uh, it is heavily inspired by Nonogram or Procross style games like Minesweeper Genius, uh, Hungry Cat Nonogram, and of course Microsoft Minesweeper. Uh, I wanted to start by showing you a little bit of the gameplay and how it works. Uh, first things first, the outside border I made automatically show to the player so they have a little bit of a start point uh, on discovering where these mines are. Um, the biggest difference between Minesweeper and this is since you have this player that can move around the board, uh, I only have the tile show uh, the uh, mines that they could possibly walk onto. So it doesn't show corners. Uh, so it may make it a little easier, may make it a little harder. But let's see. First off, let's go ahead and clear some of these zeros. We know that there can't be any mines next to these zeros. So we might as well clear some of those out. Yeah, there's a couple more. Oh, oh even better. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting pretty close. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, the key thing for the player is to try and avoid mines, of course. If you were to step on a mine, like for instance, we're pretty confident there's a mine right here. Um, these two are both showing a 1. There's nowhere else it could possibly be for them. And this one's also showing a 2. So this one is also surrounded by mines. So we know there's a mine right here. You step on a mine, it is revealed, and when you step off, it resets the game. Um, but their goal is to try and get to the center point, and depending on how I build the level, there should be multiple ways to get to the center point. They just get to choose whichever path they decide, and maybe whichever is easiest. Um, but that is how you determine where a mine is. The numbers should tell you. And I'm trying to make sure that no matter uh, how I design the level, uh, there's always multiple bits of information that the player will be able to use. That way there's no guessing. Uh, obviously they can still guess, but I want to make sure to avoid it if they can. For instance, this one right here. Um, we know there's a tile above this one, or a mine above this one. So this one also uh, takes to account that mine, so there shouldn't be anything above it. There we go. Okay, a two. We know there's one above here, but we're not sure what's to the upper right. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna step on that. Uh, this three is a big tail. There's obviously surrounded by mines, so we don't want to go there. Okay, there's also a mine right here to our right, so we should be safe right here. There's a mine over here on our left, so we should be safe here. Here's some more zeros. Let's clear those out. Oh, that one gave us that one gave it away. Good. Okay. Okay. So here's another one. We have a two right here. So it has to be below here. Another two. Okay. With this two, we know that it's to the left and above. So right here is above, and the three below it means that there has to be one below it. We should be safe right here. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Uh, so mainly it is a logic puzzle <laughs> using the Minesweeper uh, mechanic. Uh, but I do want to show you how I got it to work. Let's see. The first thing that I wanted to design, uh, only because in my head it was the easiest thing to design, was the mine itself. And something, some sort of hazard that if the player stepped on it, it reset the game and killed the player, whatnot. 
Um, but I started with a way for me to be able to see it in the viewport, but it would hide itself once the game actually starts, so the player can't see it. Uh, it just makes it easier designing the level layout and where to put mines and everything. But if everything looks like just the red tile, it's really hard to design. I have to click on everything and keep a mental note. It's just, it just chaos. So I wanted to make sure that I could see it, and then once the game started, they um, it hid its location, which is what this one does right here. It hides the location. Um, and then once the player steps on it, I wanted them to be able to see it at that point, which is what this one does. Event on entered. It sets the relative location of the um, little mine that I made. Little mine. And sets it to where the player can now see it. Now, that was the easy part. Hiding it. Hiding my little mine. And then and revealing it once it stepped on. The What I thought was going to be the difficult part was actually uh, killing the player. And I decided, since it's a mine, that it was going to only go off once the player steps off of it. Now, it's still pretty quick, so it doesn't seem to be that way. But technically, the player could just stand on the mine forever, indefinitely. <laughs> uh, but, and it wouldn't go off. But uh, this event on exit makes sure that once the player steps off of it, uh, I cast to the tile game mode uh, to reset the map. Now, I had no idea what this was, so I had to go find this. And what I ended up, like, because I knew that there was a reset in the game already. The player can just press R and reset the game. So what I ended up doing was going to the player pawn to see how that worked. Let's see, player movement. No, no, it's in the inventory. Right here, we have input action reset level. So it's when they press R, it casts to this tile game mode uh, to reset the map. So basically all I did was copy and paste this and put it on the on exit of a mine. Let's see. And that is uh, the entire mine. Now, the tile floor mine is inherited tile floor uh, and tile floor is inherited from tile or inherits from tile uh, so the the biggest thing I needed from this is the ability to use the tiles functions there is a lot of functions really good functions from here uh, but the reason I needed that was because of the tile floor safe. The safe tile has a much harder job. It's the actual mechanic of having to find hazards nearby. Uh, but of course, the first thing I started with was to make sure that uh, it shows me in the viewport, but then hides once the, the game starts, and then shows again once the player steps on that tile. Uh, again, super easy part, not not too difficult. Just set relative location uh, for the the plane. On in this case, it's just a uh, text render. I call it the mine counter. Now the mine counter itself changes depending on how many mines are nearby. But I'll show you that in a minute. But the most difficult thing was how do I get a tile to recognize the tiles next to it. Uh, but I knew already in the project we had an ability to do this uh, using the tile slide. Uh, it is able to determine where the player came from and send them in the same direction that he stepped on that ice slide. Uh, so after going through there, uh, inside of tile slide there is a uh, function called uh, is tile neighbor. Uh, so I, I knew I had to find the answer in this is tile neighbor. 
um, after digging through this function, I found this step right here. And all it does is, well, it goes through all of the neighbors of this tile, of the single tile. So this uh, object reference here should have four elements in it. Um, of course, this turns it into an array, uh, which is able to go through this for each loop. Uh, but this was the most important piece I needed. Uh, but I still didn't know how it was originally getting neighbors. So I dug even further and found this function, set neighbor, uh, which takes in a direction and a new neighbor and adds it to the neighbors. Um, now this, this function itself uh, gets called in by the tile map uh, with coordination. Uh, each, t each tile has a coordinate that gets called and it, and it's, it is what figures out um, for each tile what neighbor and the direction that neighbor is in. So up, left, right, and down. And then adds it to this neighbors. Per Each tile gets its own neighbors list. Um, so after digging through all that information, uh, that is when I finally figured out that I could use this tile's neighbors, because it already, it already knows its neighbors, to figure out how many mines are nearby. So the first thing I had to do was tell this uh, that these neighbors are a mine neighbor or not. So I went back over to the tile floor mine and I gave it a simple boolean uh, called isbom. I guess I could go and name that is mine, but isbom and it is checked. Uh, but it, that is being inherited from tile. So, so technically I made that boolean here in the uh, parent tile class. Um, and it is not set. The, the bomb is, it's not a bomb unless it's a child, mine, and then it is a bomb. I actually originally had this going in the construction script. I had it change is bomb to true instead of false. Uh, but I didn't realize that Unreal Engine uh, you can just do that here in the uh, details panel, uh, which is which is really nice. But either way, uh, so after I set each tile to know if they are a bomb or not, then I had to go check it. So using the neighbors um, uh, list, I could get it into a value with an array, and it goes through a for each loop and the body of the loop. So each element of the array is checked with a function that I also created in tile is tile bomb. And all it does is checks the condition of this tile, whichever tile it is asking about, uh, is are you a bomb? And if it's true, it returns uh, from that function, yes, it is true, or no, it is not. Super easy. Uh, this, this actually uh, took me a lot longer to figure out, unfortunately, uh, but it is a very simple function that does quite a bit of work for this. Uh, but after it checks, uh, if, of course, it returns true, then in here I have another integer variable uh, It starts at zero and gets incremented. So it just adds one to it every single time. This is true. And, and really, that's all it takes. It checks all four neighbors uh, and adds one to this mine's nearby variable every single time that neighbor is true, being a bomb. And then once completed, it updates the counter on the um, text render. Uh, so mine's new, or mine's near value, returns it to a text value uh, to update the mine counter. Super easy, uh, but turns out that's all it takes to figure out what uh, what is nearby. Now, designing the level is actually more 
of a hard part than uh, those functions and, and variables were uh, because the the key feature here it in Minesweeper there are a lot of guesses there are times where you have to take a guess uh, there could be a few mines right here and you just don't have enough numbers to really know which one of the spaces you click on uh, is mine or not so during the level design portion of this I wanted to make sure that the player always has more information, so there's never a guess. Uh, I don't know if that's going to make it too easy. I don't think so. Out of my playtesting uh, myself, eh, I have not seen it be too easy. If anything, it is still quite difficult because you can only go in the four directions. Uh, but it is always logical. There's never a guess from what I've seen, or at least of how I build it. I could build it to where this is a single path through like a ton of mines, so you don't have any information. Uh, but I, I wanted to make sure that every mine had a multiple sides to it, so that, that there is always multiple information about the one mine. Uh, that is actually why I ended up creating this child to tile floor safe, or I'm sorry, it's a duplicate of tile floor safe, called tile floor safe outside. The only difference is here at the begin play, it does not hide. Uh, that way I can have the outside border always show. Uh, again, just so the player has something to start with right here at the beginning of the game. Um, let's see. I don't believe I showed the mine working, so let me go ahead and show that real quick. There's the mine. I step off of it and it resets the level. That probably wasn't that was too quick. Let me, let me give you a better view. Okay, so we revealed some tiles. And uh-oh, I stepped on a mine. As soon as I step off of it, it resets the level. <laughs> um, let me see. But yeah, uh, that's the base of my mechanic. Um, Again, the, the main thing with this is after going through what was already set up in this tile-based game, um, I was able to find most of the stuff I needed without really having to look it up or or um, I do anything fancy or create my own thing. And most of this stuff is, is either really basic or it was directly copied from another function that almost does the same job. I think that's the key here is, is finding similar functions uh, and just tweaking it slightly. Uh, but either way, uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll catch you next time once we have the uh, next update.